All right, well, let's dive in. Um, welcome again to the Barn Raiser Crowdfunding for Good Food and Farming webinar. My name is Gina Jarmo, and I am part of the projects and partnerships team here at Barn Raiser, along with Marie Sales, our director of projects and partnerships, and Allison Waddell, our food and culinary director, um, who are both joining us today, and they may jump in here and there. Um, a little bit about myself, uh, I was raised in Northern California and was lucky to grow up learning about and developing a real passion for good food. And that really catalyzed while I was in school at UC Berkeley and became the food manager for a 150 person cooperative house and developed profound relationships with our food producers. Uh, most recently, I worked for the Good Food Awards, which is a partner of Barn Raiser and a nonprofit that celebrates and helps market and um, supports good food artisans from around the country. And it's an honor to now be at Barn Raiser and continue to work with food producers and educators and, you know, all kinds of um, good food people and producers who are working to um, really take back our food system and, and doing really great things in the movement. Barn Raiser uh, is a crowdfunding and social community dedicated to powering the good food movement by supporting food innovators, changing how we farm, eat, and live. So we're interested in any and all projects that are moving us collectively towards a more healthy and sustainable world. Um, Barn Raiser itself officially launched in September 2014, so we're just over a year old. And since then, we've had projects from all regions of the United States. Categories include food, farming, education, community, and media, and we'll go into those a little more later. And Barn Raiser serves as a community beyond crowdfunding and really holds space for trusted voices in the food movement to offer advice and, and share their stories. So there are a couple of different modes of crowdfunding. So to start, let's get a sense of where Barn Raiser fits in. So Typically, a project or a venture that's raised from a large number of people is considered crowdfunding. And nowadays, that term is most associated with internet platforms, but school fundraisers, for instance, is also a really great example of crowdfunding. So with the internet, those opportunities have expanded dramatically. You know, everyone's on social media, on their phones, on the internet. So crowdfunding now allows you to really tap into communicating to people via email and social media to really uh, push past those in-person um, contacts and really harness uh, the energy of your crowd. So jumping to the middle, uh, lending, is, is when a crowd uh, contributes to a project, but the project must pay that money back. So campaigns launched on Kiva Zip, for example, are reaching out to their communities to receive loans that they will ultimately pay back in full. Equity funding, uh, Slow Money and Ag Funder are really great examples, and their models tap into a qualified investor group uh, who contribute to your project in exchange for equity or partial ownership uh, in your company or organization. Jumping to the top, you see Barn Raiser here. We are a gift reward model, and other models like us include Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And with Barn Raiser, the, the crowd contributes to your project as a gift or an exchange for a reward. So you don't need to pay the money back. And if you raise $20,000, for example, that money's yours. Your only obligation to backers is to fulfill the rewards offered in exchange for their contribution. So let's dive into the types of projects we mentioned. Uh, farming is our, one of our first categories, and, and that includes farmers, ranchers, really anything to do with agriculture itself. Here are some of our two favorite farmers, Elizabeth and Cody of Five Foot Farm, and they raised over $7,000 to buy a new walking tractor for their small farm in Quincy, California. Food is another huge category for us, and projects include small artisanal makers, brewers, even larger, more established brands. The list really goes on. Uh, Kitchen Witch Bone Broth, pictured here, for instance, uh, they raised over $19,000 to purchase new equipment to really have the capacity to distribute their bone broth via their direct sales, farmers markets, and, and most recently, Whole Foods. 
Education includes school gardens, you know, nutrition education programs, farmer training, incubator farms, universities, etc. This is Ben Icorn, uh, a beloved garden teacher from the Edible Schoolyard in Berkeley, and he launched a Grow Your Lunch campaign and raised over $13,000 to produce and distribute a free Top 10 Budding Gardeners Handbook, Top 10 Tips for Budding Gardeners Handbook. Community, that includes urban farms and community gardens, anything that's rallying together a community around food. Uh, here is part of the Foraged Farm team from Denver, Colorado, and they raised over $5,000 to buy a new truck so they could deliver excess and perfectly good food from the farmer's market to their local pantries and food banks. Really great story. Media, uh, food media includes, you know, magazines, documentary films, blogs, apps, cookbooks, really anything helping to celebrate um, from an advocacy or informational point of view. And this is Falling Fruit. Uh, they produce a mobile application that helps, um, you know, people in their communities locate and find uh, fruit trees and edible plants that are available for harvest in local um, and public space. So why Barn Raiser? We mentioned a lot of other crowdfunding campaigns and uh, a few different types of, of ways to really harness your crowd. Uh, well, Barn Raiser itself connects you, you know, the user, the innovator, to a wider audience of specifically good food supporters. People are visiting our site because they believe in and, and they want to support good food. And we found that around 41 million Americans align themselves with, with health and sustainability, and those people are looking to rally around champions of the food movement. So we're making that connection through press, social media, our sponsors, and, and our general audience. Um, our most recent media partnership we're so excited to announce is Yahoo Food. They have over 60 million um, viewers on their Yahoo Food branch uh, that launched earlier this week, and they are featuring a project a week. So really exciting partnership um, among others. So because our audience is, is so focused and, and connected, our 70% success rate is double that of other crowdfunding platforms, food-related projects. So because of that, you know, the, the typical barn raiser raise is five to $25,000, but our average campaigns raise about 12,000. And again, that's about three times as much as the average food and ag related projects on other platforms. So that 70% success rate really directly relates to the high level of attention and, and support from the barn raiser team throughout your campaign experience. You know, your campaign won't be one of 50,000 on a site with an unfocused audience. And it's our job to provide a platform that really drives additional exposure to innovators like you. You know, you're, you're reshaping how, how we're farming and eating and, and living. And because of that, you know, our team is comprised of former nutrition educators and chefs and gardeners, food producers, you know, restauranteurs, the list goes on. Um, essentially, you know, Barn Raiser was, was founded by food people for food people. So you'll receive personal advice from a team with years of experience in the good food and farming world. We're really personally invested in your success and, and we've been there. So you're guaranteed strong homepage placement and, and social media support. And we really act as advisors and editors. And we ultimately like to say cheerleaders. We're really on your team um, well, before you're thinking about uh, launching a campaign and planning to when it's live to long after. We love to keep our campaigns um, in our community um, throughout uh, their experience, both as a live project and as a past successful one, too. So there are obvious benefits of crowdfunding itself, and it really can perfectly fit into the needs of your business. A few examples from past projects include Emily Robbins on the left of Goldilocks Goodies, and she raised $2,000 for her gluten-free baking company to really get her small business out of her home kitchen space and into a commissary kitchen. So small amount of money, but really large impact as far as uh, giving her the ability to, to grow her business and have the capacity to feed more people. 
Swallowtail Farm is in the middle, and they're a CSA from Florida, and they raised over $35,000 to build a micro creamery from a shipping container and purchase a veggie oil delivery truck. So sustainability all around. So amazing. Last but not least is the Green Bronx Machine, and they raised over $39,000 to build a vertical garden health and wellness center in the Bronx and bring nutrition education to their urban community. So specific benefits include speed and flexibility. You know, crowdfunding really supports many types of organizations, whether it's nonprofit or for-profit, you know, individual makers, farmers, etc. You are setting your own funding goal. So our minimum starts at $2,000, but we really don't have a maximum. And we'll go into this later, but we can really help you determine ballpark numbers as far as setting a, setting a goal. Crowdfunding itself can have a turnaround of as much of a few weeks of planning before launch to a few months, but execution, you know, really you set the timing in a way that works best for your needs and your ability to push, push the campaign forward. You're building public awareness. You know, crowdfunding requires and gives you this incredible opportunity to clarify your ask and the platform to tell your own story and, and spread that incredible story beyond your existing community. It's also a profound opportunity to pre-sell your product. And this easily applies to farms and, and food products, of course, but, but for other things as well. We've, we've had projects pre-sell tickets to their events. Um, a, a past campaign, a local food shift magazine in Colorado, pre-sold subscriptions to their magazine, among other things. And, and you know, those pre-sales really allow you to have more capital and, and less worry. So you pre-sell a CSA subscription, for instance, while you're raising capital to invest in your business. So just like a CSA, you're pre-selling and getting that money you need up front, and then you're divvying out the product over the coming months or year. Crowdfunding also really expands your community and, and your opportunities. You're building a customer base and your community simultaneously by, by tapping into your current supporters and expanding this network that will ultimately allow you to grow down the road. And that really creates exposure you need to forge new partnerships, you know, with distributors or, or other funders. And we see this with many of our campaigns, uh, three months down the road, for instance, someone will come through and offer a grant or a donation or come on as a new client. And because it's a public event, unlike private fundraising, it's occurring in that public sphere and, and really bolsters your community long after your campaign. We often also look at crowdfunding as a slice of the pie. You know, it's really a valuable asset and accent to your overall funding needs. It's, it's really something to fit into your fundraising plans for the next few years. You know, it may be that you're going to seek investors at some point. It, it may be that you need entry-level dollars and, and you plan to come back to crowdfunding again next year. It's really an incredibly helpful aspect of, of your overall funding needs. So with that, let's jump into the meat of our webinar today. Uh, we've had a number of successful campaigns that we'll talk about and highlight, and they all share a few keys to their crowdfunding success. So let's dive in. Key number one, tell your story. This is Nigel Walker of Eat Well Farm, and he's actually Marie Sales, our Director of Partner and Pro Projects and Partnerships' own CSA farmer. And he raised over $23,000 to launch a chicken breeding facility farm um, on his farm that, that does not kill male chicks, which is quite common in, in norm normal breeding facilities, and essentially also el eliminated his need to purchase from hatcheries in general, which ultimately make, makes his eggs truly local. You know, all of his chickens, and including the roosters, um, live out on a large pasture. The, the roosters are eventually used for meat and the hens for their delicious eggs. And again, that's really rare. And he says in his incredibly touching video, I highly recommend you check it out, that, that his goal is to make humane, sustainable farming the norm. So his project appealed to the larger farming community uh, through a partnership that he established with UC Davis's Ag Department and can be used as a model for other farms. His, his campaign also appealed directly to his CSA members, including Marie, from a humanitarian point of view and, and a wider audience in general. 
So the story was picked up through a local radio station around the humane treatment of animals. So really, he was able to craft a, a very personal story, broaden it, and then tell an even more compelling story to a wider audience. So drawing from Nigel's campaign, make it personal and, and share your passion. If, if you visit his page again, please do. Uh, you can really hear his passion for his birds, both, both in his video and right on the page. So find ways to tug at your audience's heartstrings and, and really share your heart. You know, at, as with experience from our team, we, we know that choosing a career in the good food movement is really chosen primarily for passion and not to get rich quick. So really explore those interesting and passionate parts of your story, why, why you started this journey to begin with, and anything really that can draw more attention to your cause, like Nigel was able to do with the humane treatment of these chicks. And share the bigger picture, you know, talk about your next steps and how your project can impact a wider network, just as Nigel did with opening up the conversation around increasing the demand for humanely raised meat. And show your face and, and make the ask. You know, Nigel was right there on the video. He was making phone calls, you know, sending out updates and emails throughout the campaign. And really, the, the reason why your audience is so interested in supporting your project and watching your campaign succeed is because they support you and, and they want to hear from you throughout the duration of your campaign. Another really great example is Kitchen Witch Bone Broth. We, we saw them earlier today and they raised over $18,000 for their bone broth company by not only telling the story of their company and their specific needs for growth, but also the incredible health benefits of the bone broth they make and, and really sharing how they're reusing bones from meat farms and other specifics of their business that you wouldn't otherwise know from just picking up one of their jars off the shelf at a grocery store. So our next key to crowdfunding success is finding your community. We all know that this is called crowdfunding, but that word crowd often feels big. So, so we've really started to refer to it as community funding since the dollars and energy that really shine through are coming from your local community. So because of that, it's really essential to, to find your audience. Who's your audience? That's, that's basically everyone you know in the universe and anyone who you think would be interested in funding and supporting your success. And we all need to do this anyway to see our business thrive. So crowdfunding is a really valuable way to launch a big marketing and promotional campaign. Uh, you know, these are folks you, who you know, you know, your friends, your family, your current customers, and also people you don't yet know, friends of friends, potential new customers, uh, your general audience. And the closer they are to you, the more likely they are to take action and spread the word and, and pledge to your campaign. It is important to note that across all crowdfunding websites from across the board, an average of two thirds of your funding will come from your immediate community. And the other average, that one third, um, might come from outside of your network. And that very well may be the extended barn raiser community or, or through social media. So if you're looking at this and, and, and you really need to increase your audience or currently have a smaller amount of customers to, to make that large impact you need, build a team. And really, this is helpful regardless of your audience size, too. It's always helpful to have multiple people with you as, you know, advisors and supporters and just overall help managing your campaign. So when you're when you're looking into this, look for natural partnerships and establish them before the start of your campaign. We like to say, uh, find the butter to your bread or the bread to your butter, whatever um, resonates best with you. <laughs> uh, so, so, be, so look, pulling from that, you know, if, if you're selling a product for instance, and, and there's a related product or business that you deal with regularly, again, you, you know, you sell bread pictured here for instance, and you know, you're finding that butter or olive oil company that's next to you at the farmer's market and see if they're willing to share their email list with you and, and support your outreach efforts during your campaign. Also look for any involvement you have in your local and regional regional community and who else could would benefit directly from your project. You know, are there are there restaurants or other local farms, farmers market associations, really anyone interested in spreading the word. So as far as as far as building a team for your campaign itself, designate specific roles to friends and find that core group of people who might be able to help you. Find someone to be a temporary project manager or consider hiring or finding a volunteer intern for the duration of your campaign. 
the Chicken Bridge Bakery team uh, and their children, they're pictured here. They, they did a fantastic job of cultivating uh, a network through friends. Basically, what they did was they had a potluck uh, with a circle of 10 friends, and they invited them to join on as a circle of advisors for, for the campaign. And they committed to reaching out to their extended networks once the campaign went live. So because their close friends were also in the food movement, their friends' extended network really found value in what they were doing because they had their own personal connection and values around supporting artisanal grains and local food. So once you have your audience together and those partner organizations and kind of a, a building block um, set up and ready to go, reach out. And how do you reach out? Well, well, we find that email has shown to be queen because it's way more convenient for your backers to click and pledge immediately. So if you have an email list, typically around 5 to 10% of that list will actually pledge between $25 and $100. So we find that it's around $75 average. And while that may not sound like a lot, Focusing your energy on, on like we said, on, on finding those partnerships who may have extensive mailing lists. And, and keep in mind, this does include your team's personal lists as well. So your 300 people can turn into 1,000 people who will turn into 100 backers. Uh, Facebook and, and other social media tools are also valuable and, and will definitely support your campaign. Uh, one of our most recently funding funded projects, a Willamette Valley Cookspace and Republic of Jam, a collaborative project between a mother and son, uh, they posted to social media daily in their last week, and, and that really helped them out quite a bit. However, we find that on average, the numbers are much lower as far as converting to backers. Um, and to really see uh, that conversion, you have to commit to using Facebook extremely regularly to really see those results and potentially pay to boost ads. So really, we tell our campaigns to focus most of their outreach efforts uh, via email. So how do you start getting that together? Well, well, today, you know, you add an email sign-up box on your homepage of your website that advertises your upcoming campaign. You know, you add a sign-up sheet in your store or at the farmer's market or really anywhere where you're interacting face-to-face -face with your community. And, and then, of course, you know, get on Facebook or Twitter and start adding friends. But that is just a, you know, an, a really wonderful accent compared to your overall email outreach. So once you get your email list, you really got to keep asking and tapping into your network throughout your campaign. Uh, many of our projects and campaigns um, have a great deal of credibility and, and really a su substantial and large email list. But they found that you really have to ask people multiple times to get people to actually pull out their credit cards and make a donation. So, so no, you are not bugging your audience by reaching out multiple times. They want to hear from you. The more the better, actually. And, and we've really never heard of an audience member complaining about that. They just need to get that extra check-in or, or get an email when their wallet happens to be sitting right next to them. So read out and let them know what you're up to throughout your campaign. Special of the day, um, find 10 backers to pledge on the first day because it's really way easier to ask on the first day than to ask some of your good friends on week two or three that they haven't yet donated. So our next success tip, set the right goal. And setting a realistic goal is, is really important here. We have two really wonderful examples, Lawrence Butler on the left of Daddy's Local Market in Nebraska. And he was initially unsure about reaching his ideal goal of $15,000. So what he did was he set a smaller goal of $6,000 for his first campaign got his feet wet and became really familiar with how to run a successful campaign. And he gained such incredible momentum that he turned around and added part two, a whole other second campaign where he was able to raise that additional $8,000. So in the end, he raised $15,000, but in two segments, um, less kosher than a lot of our campaigns. But again, you know, this can be something that you can come back to, to launch part two at any point, uh, like we said, but there are ways to set um, multiple goals um, within one campaign, and we'll dive into a new smokehouse for Fire Tongue Farm next. Um, and basically, you know, the reason why Lawrence did that is because we are a tilt model. So you must hit your minimum goal to get funded. So we really suggest, you know, you organize your campaign by dividing it into two parts where you have that minimum and attainable goal in place, but we also, you know, have a stretch goal or, or that ideal amount of money you need to really solidify your dream. So once you tilt and you still have time left, 
change all of the language on your page to focus on your stretch goal. And, and we're more than happy to talk you through that individually. Uh, Fire Tongue Farm on the right here is a really great example of that. And, and he had a smaller, tight-knit community to raise money for, for their pepper farm. And ideally needed $10,000, but weren't so sure about the backer turnout. So what they did was they set their goal at $3,000 and their stretch goal to $10,000 and blew it out of the water in less than 24 hours, raised $3,500 in one day. So they changed everything on their page to focus on reaching that stretch goal and, and they made it to $9,625. Just a few hundred shy, but Levon told me that a $400 check showed up in his mailbox. So I like to say they reached their stretch goal and another really great example of uh, contributions coming through after a campaign has been completed because it's in that public sphere. So make your goal attainable and we can't stress that enough. And, and that's based off of both your proposed budget and the size of your community. So set your goal based off of how many people you think you can reach and then take that five to 10% of your mailing list, say, and go off that to start. So say you have 2,000 people on your mailing list, and if 5% of those donate, that's about 100, and people contribute generally around $75. So with that audience of 2,000 people from your mailing list, you've got an attainable goal of around $7,500. So take that number and then look at your budget and see if you can find a comfortable spot in between. So once you have that goal figured out, Activate your network, you know, check in, like we said, via email predominantly, and of course, social media, but don't be afraid to pick up the phone and give your supporters a call, you know, having events and distributing flyers, uh, putting up a big sign at the, at the market in your store, putting a sticker on your products, advertising your campaign, really anything that gets you promoting your project and adding dollars to your campaign is helpful. And then Stretch and dream, you know, set that comfortable minimum goal and then really look at what it would mean to raise $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 or, or over even. Another great tip for success is planning. And that is very important, a, a very important component of a successful project. And so the more you plan before, the more you'll be prepared during the campaign and, and the more you'll be able to raise in the long run. And we've established a really easy to use uh, tools and a dashboard that gives you daily check-ins of to-dos for each stage of your campaign so that you really feel secure and supported throughout the whole process. And, you know, learn from others. Check out those other successful campaigns and look at their updates and rewards and videos and, and the language around the pro their project goals to, to really get a sense of what a funded campaign looks like. Um, so pledge $5 or even $1 to a current campaign on the site and, and feel what it's like to be a backer and, and that whole process so you can receive updates and see how they're communicating and, and what happens when they hit their campaign goal. And then, you know, your outreach really start now. And, and as mentioned before, um, an average of 20 to 30 percent we found of your audience um, will find you through BarnRaiser. Uh, but really, you know, your effort is what starts that momentum. That 70 percent on average will will come directly from your network and their friends. So your community needs to hear about your campaign as quickly as possible. You know, you want to be thinking about emails now and thinking about ways to plan for that. Uh, people often, often reference examples of projects going viral, and, and these campaigns really build momentum with planning and effort, and a very small amount of projects actually go viral. They do that by, by planning far, far in advance. Uh, Flow Hive, for instance, many of you may know, raised $12 million for a beehive on tap, essentially, and they were probably in planning mode for years before their campaign went live, and they probably had over 50,000 people who were ready to pledge immediately. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, we've seen many successful campaigns launch a month into the process, and they really learn how to reach out to their extended community, and we can make that process as easy as possible for you uh, through our online tools, of course, and then also checking in with us periodically. So another key component of crowdfunding is, is giving great rewards. We really believe that rewards are what draw a lot of backers in, and it gives people a tangible way to, to feel connected to your business. And most of you are probably selling something, and that's a great opportunity to get your product in the hands of people. 
So create rewards that reflect your business or your expertise. Um, they should appeal to a wide range of people, both local and regional. But as opposed to just a contribution, look at it as promoting your business or your organization or your idea you know, directly to a customer base. We like to say that there are four ways to give. Uh, thanks, swag, recognition, and experience. So a thanks, for example, can be sending a card, a thank you, a, a call out on social media. Swag is an item, uh, a t-shirt, a food product, a video, a trinket, you know, a subscription. Giving recognition can be a name on a site or a donor wall, uh, naming rights or a sponsorship, and giving an experience, you know, a restaurant meal or a farm tour or a class or consulting. And with these rewards, go small and go big. You know, you know your audience a lot better than we do, and we have a lot of advice, but we always say you know your abilities, your, your audience's ability to give. So, so have a range of rewards from, say, starting at $5 or $10 um, or $15 even and go all the way up to $100 or $500 or $1,000 or more. And those rewards should be set at reasonable values. So don't expect to double the values of goods for your campaign. Um, the way that you can do that, um, you know, is by getting creative. So think of bundling your rewards by adding items to a gift basket, not otherwise offered on your website or in your store, or adding in an event ticket or a t-shirt or a trinket to make it feel particular, particularly special and exclusive. Um, rewards that sponsor something that you're already doing in your community, like garden tours or scholarships that actually underwrite your costs can be a really powerful way to draw people into your campaign itself. itself. Um, make sure your rewards are easy to fulfill, like a t-shirt or a phone call. You really don't want to break the bank. So figure out and, and factor in how much money you'll make on top of delivering the rewards and, and really make sure to factor in shipping costs as well. Whoops. There we go. So we've got a few really great examples for you. Uh, to the top left is Swallowtail Farm, and they sold a tote bag, baby not included. It was filled with treats um, and products from their farm. Uh, to the right, a t-shirt should absolutely not be overlooked. Lomax Farm in North Carolina had a t-shirt made by a local producer, and they sold over five or 100 of those uh, throughout the duration of their campaign. Again, Kitchen Witch Bone Broth on the bottom left, we've now met them a few times now, they sold a year's worth of bone broth delivered, and that was a really considerable savings um, as far as price point, but since it was pre-sales, it enabled them to really get the money in advance in order to purchase equipment. And they sold five of those, so that's $10,000 out of the $19,000 they collected, just about half their raise. And like we mentioned, um, you know, use an experience you may be already offering. Yachtville School Garden sold four $200 garden tours, which was an $800 contribution to their $10,000 campaign. So our last big tip, though you will definitely uncover more detailed ones in your dashboard and in conversations with me and Allison and Marie of the project team, is be fearless with the ask. Uh, you know, crowdfunding is asking people to join you, to, to participate in your business in, in a really meaningful way. And that goes beyond simply asking for money or, or for a contribution. It's really that give and get relationship. You know, people are backing your campaign because they want to support your business or your organization, and they also want the reward itself. So speak up. Uh, you are your biggest cheerleader and really are the best person to tell your own story. So get the word out and ask people to help you. And, and you really have to be willing to be the spokesperson for your campaign. And you want to get your whole team on board, too. This is a really great example of that, the Bovine Bakery team. Everyone who was involved was sending out emails and encouraging their friends to participate and were a really valuable part of the process. So if you have a board of directors, for instance, get all of them together to, to both be backers and to reach out to their networks throughout the campaign. And be direct. Uh, we do get this every so often, predominantly with our wonderful farmers who are worried about crowdfunding and that it might be a handout and that they do all of the work that themselves and they don't want to ask for handouts. But crowdfunding really is that give and get exchange. You know, it's those CSA subscriptions and other products as we went over and you are promoting your business and selling your product or experiences through the crowdfunding campaign. 
So if you have folks who have told you in the past that they'd be willing to help your business with a cash donation, now is the time to make that call. And we call these people the Uncle Henry who says, you know, when you get your business together, I'm happy to help you fund it. And you know he has a lot of money and you're afraid of when to ask for that. But now's that time. Um, you know, you have this really tangible place to go and, and, and to direct people. And you really want to be celebratory and proud of what you do. So make sure to have fun and be playful. Um, again, highly recommend take a look at Willamette Valley Cookspace and Republic of Jam's collaborative product project. They're called Passing on a Legacy and Building a New One. And they posted as they were nearing the end of their campaign and throughout videos and memes of Kermit the Frog screaming yay and a kitten on a parasail. Um, you know, really just hilarious and informational updates around where they were in their funding goal and what's next for them. And you can really feel the passion and fun they have, um, you know, in their business and the excitement they have around, around getting their audience passionate about supporting them. So, so as a backer myself, I was so excited and have had so much fun whenever I got an update from them in my inbox that I even increased my contribution. And we do, we do see spikes in contributions right after a project has sent out an update or an email. So again, don't be afraid to speak up and be direct. Your audience wants to hear from you and they want to celebrate their, your success with you. And finally, just one last little encouraging note, don't give up. The Butcher's Guild is a really great example as well. They, they sent tweets and Facebook posts to every single person who backed their project. And they were successfully able to raise 140% of their initial funding goal. And a lot of that um, is chalked up to their consistent communication. So a quick recap of the five keys to success that we went over today. Telling, telling story, you know, find that passion behind your project and, and really um, focus on that as you tell your story. Find your community, tell your friends and family members who support you and also expand out to potential partnerships and friends of friends. Set the right goal, set something that feels comfortable for you um, and stretch and dream, of course, to what it would really mean to raise more money. Give great rewards, you know, focus on your expertise and make sure that you factor in shipping costs. Make sure that it's something that you're already offering or an easy thing for you to, to provide to your backers. And be fearless with your ask. You have, you're doing amazing things. You have a wonderful business or organization or, or food product. And that's, this is your really amazing chance to celebrate that and everybody on board with your uh, really exciting next steps for your business. So a few uh, campaign details before we wrap up. Um, the setup, planning, and timing of your campaign. We've, we've seen people set up a campaign within a few weeks or, or a few months. It really does depend on your organization. The page itself, that content, is really easy to set up. and can be done in a couple of days um, once you have all the content ready to go with, without a lot of stress. The length campaigns generally last 30 days to 60, but it really can be less or more, again, dependent on your organization and your timing and, and how that works for your business as far as you know the time you're able to commit to reaching out. Our barn raiser fee structure, we, we are a for-profit organization and we take a 5% flat fee for using the platform itself and, and our overall support. And then there's a credit card processing fee that runs around 4 to 5%. Um, so you can estimate, say, if you raise $10,000, that you're going to get $9,000 straight into your checking account if you succeed. And, you know, how do you get started? Really, by, by being here today, you, you already have. And we really have everything on our website to take you through building your draft and, you know, our personal support, which we'll dive into for just a second next. So next steps, prepare your project and simply, you know, go to barnraiser.us and you'll find a create button at the top of your screen. So you really just start filling out our modal and that'll take you straight into the draft where you can build, you can build out your page. And then you're building buzz. You're, you're gathering those emails, you're putting together your lists, telling everyone you know about your upcoming campaign and all of the exciting plans you have in store, you know, getting your circle of advisors and teams together and generating excitement. You're about to do really great things. You already have been. And then last but definitely not least, get funded. And we've had a variety of wonderful, successful barn raisers. You've met a few of them, but 
just to talk about a few more because we love them so much. This is Carol Morrison on the top left, and she is actually the industrial poultry farmer highlighted in Food Inc., who raised over $15,000 to go free range. We've met Daddy before. Um, Chef Holly Green from Joy Foodly raised $20,000 to bring cooking classes into schools and homes. And Cloud9 Rooftop Farm in Philadelphia, they raised over $5,000 to build a fence around their existing rooftop garden so senior citizens could safely use the space and be a part of the gardening program. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Um, we are so excited to see your project drafts start rolling through. Again, simply go to www.barnraiser.us slash create. Um, I am going to stay on for a few minutes to answer questions, so feel free to type them in here. And while I'm waiting for um, your wonderful entries, I just wanted to let you know that this is the first webinar of a three-part series, and I will send you the links to register for those um, in our follow-up email. Um, one is digging in. Um, steps to success as far as what to look at and focus on through each phase of your campaign. And that's a 30 minute session, so a lot shorter. And then another, uh, the, the next part in the series is finding your audience. So really looking at and diving into exactly, you know, how to and exploring more ways to activate your audience and, and really get people excited about committing to back your campaign. So those um, flip flop um, every two weeks. So one week is digging in and the next week is audience. Um, and that is at 10 a.m. every Wednesday for 30 minutes. We really hope you'll join us, especially as you start to think about your campaign. Um, I'm not seeing any questions come through. So I hope that if any come out of your back pocket after we finish up here, that you do not hesitate to email me. I'm more than happy to jump on the phone. Um, my email is gina at barnraiser.us. And again, you'll be receiving an email from me later today with, with next steps and a recording and some fun worksheets that we have for you. So thank you so much for joining us today. And, and we look forward to learning all about your good food project.